Good evening, dear viewers. I'm Vijay Gauri here with you. Welcome to 21st episode of BMC Global Live Al Hilal Health World. Before we get on with the topic, please do not forget to like and share our Facebook page. Also, like, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Sports is something which we all enjoy playing as well as watching, and hence the term sports injuries is very common to all of us. Either we have experienced these injuries ourselves, or we have been with someone who have sustained these injuries. So today, to understand more about this sports injuries and ways to prevent them, we have an orthopedic surgeon with 13 years of work experience, Dr. Prakash Kurtakodi. He is currently working at Al Hilal Hospital, Morak. He has been in Bahrain for three years. He has done his post graduation from Karnataka. He has fellowship in joint replacement surgery from Spursh Hospital, Bangalore, and Krakenhaus Hospital, Germany. He is also trained in keyhole surgeries and has performed knee replacement and keyhole surgeries in Bahrain. So, hi doctor, welcome to the show. I hope you're doing good today. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks, Gauri, for having me in the show. Yes, doctor. So, welcome once again. So, doctor, we'll be starting with the most basic question as to what is sports injuries. Could you please elaborate that? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, sports injury in a general sense or in a pure medical uh, terms means these are the injuries which uh, a person sustains it when he is either engaged in the sports or he is getting a, a training to do so. The injuries that happen during this course, they are referred to as the sports injuries. Mm -hmm. But in a common practice, uh, it is not specifically that these injuries happen only during the sports. Mm -hmm. even, the, uh, even the activities of daily life also, one can sustain these injuries. Like the common thing that you have, uh, must have heard of, like an ankle sprain where somebody is walking and tripped and fell down. Uh, in a pure sense, it may not be a sports injury, but uh, the sports injury will cover all of these injuries. So, doctor, for a common man to understand, what are the structures or tissues that are affected during these injuries? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good question and uh, it's good to be uh, uh, clarified in detail so that people can understand what it is because now people are aware uh, cardiologist will deal with the heart okay. and... Uh, and a neurologist will, will deal with brain and nerve tissues. So like that, uh, a sports injury or a sports medicine will basically deal with bones, muscles, tendons, and ligaments, okay. all these structures. Uh, I would like to talk words in detail of all of these structures uh, because uh, in, uh, in, in detail, they not, may not be knowing these things. So let me clarify uh, regarding the structures uh, which generally get involved in a sports injury uh, because uh, the different components of musculoskeletal system that is bone, muscle, ligament, tendon, they all are involved and the injury when it happens to any one of them, it will come into the category of a sports injury. Let me tell in a little bit detail about each of them. Now bone is very common, people are aware of it. Uh, how does it get injured in a sports is obviously if you are playing sports and you fall down and a fracture happens, that also we include or sometimes a harsh throw from the uh, somebody is playing a cricket and they throw very harshly and there can be avulsion fractures in the shoulder where a small bone is chipped off even that is also a fracture it's very typical of a sports injury mm -hmm. uh, and a stress fracture like somebody who is too much into running mm -hmm. like a marathon or a sprinting and especially if they're walking on a hard surface mm -hmm. then they can sustain fractures in the in the foot bones uh, these are also categorized, uh, categorized as sports injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, the coming to the next one, muscle, people also are quite aware of what a muscle is. Yes. Now, uh, if somebody doesn't up adequately or uh, had a sudden muscle catch, mm -hmm. uh, these also come into the sports injuries. Okay. The third structure is a tendon. Many of us uh, may have heard about it, but I would like to tell a few words about it. Basically what happens is all the muscles, they have two attachments. One at attachment is in a bulk, it will attach to a bone. But as it comes down, it narrows down, thins down and becomes like a rope. Yes. And this rope goes and fixes to one particular point on the bone. So when a muscle pulls, it will pull this rope and it will pull the bone. And that's how the movement happens in that line. So this particular structure which transforms from the muscle and to become a rope, that's called as a tendon. So people can snap this or rupture this or tear this also uh, when they are doing the sports. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, quite commonly this, this tendon injuries are common around the shoulder. Uh, people who have sports, playing sports like tennis or even a, even a um, cricket, they can snap this biceps tendons. Mm -hmm. And coming to the last category that is the ligaments. Mm -hmm. So, ligaments are not uh, like tendons. Tendons, the main thing is they have a very elastic nature. But the ligaments, are not, they don't have so much of elastic nature. The main function of the ligaments is they will try to give stability for the joints. Okay. Now, uh, any joint, uh, to define what a joint is, basically when two bones meet and they move, they move in one particular plane. If it has to move in that particular predefined plane, uh, it can sh shake or move or go in, in either direction but it should not happen. As by the nature of the design, it has to move in one particular plane. If it has to do that, then all the ligaments which are there, they will give the stability so that the bones will move in that plane. So the basic function of a ligament is to give stability mm -hmm. uh, for a joint. They are, they are present in all the joints in the body. So if, if you injure that, so it also comes under the sports injury category. The common, very common one which you must have heard of is an ankle sprain. When the doctor tells about an ankle sprain, what he's trying to tell you is that the ligament which are supporting the ankle have been injured. So this, when he's telling, he's referring to that particular structure in a, in a broad sense of a musculoskeletal injury. Okay. Yeah? I hope I've clarified uh, the basic things which are covered in the sports injury. Okay, doctor. So yes, you had covered a lot about the structures. So what are the common type of sports injuries that a patient comes in with? So even uh, the sports injury can involve any joint or any part of the body. Uh, quite commonly what we see are mainly around the ankle, okay. the knee joint mm -hmm. and the shoulder, yes. muscle pulls, tennis elbows. Uh, these are some of the common injuries that we encounter in the in the day-to-day -day clinical practice. Okay. Now, uh, the, the sports injury is gaining importance now uh, is for the reason that uh, we are started to see uh, these knee injuries more often these days. In our daily routine, we have seen that uh, we are more frequently seeing these sports injuries uh, in our clinical practice. Uh, the, de the numbers are definitely higher than what we used to see when we were trainees, that was uh, uh, around 20 years ago. Now, the reason for this is uh, apart from a few exceptions of the Western countries, most of the countries uh, have the younger population in a, in a, in a higher uh, percentage in a population mm -hmm. and that will give them more mobility mm -hmm. and they are involved more in the sports. Mm -hmm. Plus the awareness also is more towards the health. So more often people are going in for uh, walking, jogging, training, gym or uh, treadmill. So all these uh, are making them more prone for the sports injuries. And that is also one of the reasons uh, why that we are seeing uh, more often the sports injuries in these times. So uh, in this regard, when they get involved in these things, then uh, they land up in ankle sprains or uh, muscle pulls, muscle spasms or uh, shoulder injuries or a tennis elbow where they mainly uh, uh, are people who play tennis or the uh, badminton, uh, quite often we see, these are the common injuries that we, we say. Uh, we see more often in the practice. Uh, one particular thing specific for the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, of course worldwide, but more specifically is the knee injuries. Okay. And the reason for this is, like unlike in India where, where cricket is the love of the nation, uh, for the Middle East it is the football. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll find people of, of all ages, both men and women, all of them, are, uh, they love the sports and uh, they go out to play and that's why uh, they become more prone for the knee injuries. And this is, a, this is the reason why in, in our clinical practice here, the significant of them uh, come with the knee, knee, particular knee sports injuries. So what are the common symptoms that a patient comes in with when they have these sports injuries? The common symptoms, uh, well, see, the symptoms will vary uh, in, a, in a wide spe spectrum. Uh, but specifically, uh, each joint uh, behaves a little bit differently. But commonly, the symptoms that a person experiences when he is injured in a sports, he, he will be the first thing will be the pain, of course, yeah. Yeah, an excruciating pain, followed by swelling, and uh, pain on walking, 
and they can't move the joint, it will be very painful. Sometimes if the injury is a little bit more, then the bleeding underneath the skin will cause skin bruising. These are all the very common symptoms one can expect in a sports injury. Mm -hmm. Apart from this, there are some specific symptoms uh, which are very specific for one particular joint. For example, for the knee, uh, they may additionally have uh, symptoms like locking or instability. Okay. Yeah, these are uh, specific for one particular joint. But generally speaking, pain, swelling, bruising, limping, these are the common symptoms uh, in a sports injury. So doctor, as you had mentioned, these days knee injuries as well as ankle sprains are very common. So could you please tell us more about them? Like as in what the patient should expect when they come to visit an orthopedic with such injuries? Yeah, uh, yeah. I would like to discuss uh, two common injuries that we see in the practice. We can't cover uh, a lot of them. So we'll begin with uh, the most common, that is the ankle, ankle sprain. So it's very common, people, we have heard people uh, and either one of us or one of us in the family very commonly would have injured the ankle. Usually what happens is uh, when a person misses his or her step and the ankle deviates in a very wrong way, then it will pull the ligament and will cause the injury. Now uh, when, uh, when, when such a patient walks into the, the doctor's consultation room, usually what they can expect is uh, the doctor is going to ask you a few questions uh, to, to know how the injury has happened. Uh, why this is important is he's trying to understand the mechanism of how it happened. If he understands that, he can, uh, uh, by the history, can get a clue of what particular structure is injured. Okay. Once uh, asking the questions, then he will be doing some examination and some test on the affected part, like the ankle. Uh, to find out which particular ligament because it is not like one ligament which supports the ankle. There are a lot of them. So you will have to pinpoint uh, or try to get a broad sense of which particular ligament is injured. Once he's done that, in most of the cases, if required, he will be uh, asking for a very basic screening investigations like an x-ray. So basically the doctor will be asking for the x-ray mainly to make sure that the bone is not injured and sometimes some special x-rays, something called a stress fuse. So these are the basic things that uh, once an ankle injury happens, uh, this is how it flows. So doctor, how are these ankle injuries treated? Yeah. Well, uh, the ankle injuries, there are different grades of ankle injuries depending on the severity. Now, the ankle sprain where somebody twisted the ankle and fell from a standing height, like for example, that somebody is walking and tripped and fell down the force and, uh, which goes through this one is different from a person who is actually running behind a ball, chasing in the, in the football, and he twists and he falls. Mm -hmm. The amount of force is very, very, very different. Mm -hmm. And that's why the structures and the severity with which he injures in both these patients will also differ. Mm -hmm. And that's why the treatment also will differ. So once the ankle injury is diagnosed by your orthopedic surgeon, uh, he's going to grade it and see whether it is a very mild problem or a moderate problem or a severe problem. Now, fortunately, even though the ankle injuries are common, 90% of them will fall into either mild or moderate. Uh, why it is important is because all of this mild and moderate, they can be treated in a conservative way. What I mean by conservative way is non-operative. It doesn't need surgery. Only a small percentage of them which are very high grade sprains, in them they will go in for the different surgeries. The, the common uh, treatment modalities, treatment options which the doctor is going to give you in a in a, in majority of the cases will be painkillers to reduce the pain and then he will be advising you to elevate the limb so that uh, the swelling which happens because of the injury will reduce. He will be advising you to put a lot of ice that will also help in reducing the pain and the swelling. And if the doctor feels that the injury is a bit more and the symptoms are a bit more severe, he may also advise you for going in for a plaster. Uh, so for some patients, it may not convince them. Uh, they may also be surprised. But they should be aware that uh, the doctors will be advising them the plaster if they, if they feel it is required, even though there is no bony injury. It's a common understanding that uh, it's only put for the fractures. 
Uh, but if the if the sprains or the ankle injuries are a bit more severe, in that case the doctor will be advising the plaster even in such cases. Mm -hmm. Regard to the small percentage of the patients where the unfortunately the injury has been diagnosed with an MRI saying that it's a severe grade of injury. Mm -hmm. In that case, in those small percentage of cases, the, uh, the treatment will be mainly surgery mm -hmm. uh, by either open technique or by arthroscopy. The torn ligaments will be either repaired or will be replaced by the new ligaments. Okay. So what are the knee injuries uh, symptoms that they come in with? Yeah. Well, um, as, I, as I discussed earlier, like any other ligament injuries, even the knee ligament injuries also will come with the basic symptoms of pain, swelling and inability to walk or too much pain when they are trying to move the, the knee. Mm. These are very common ones. But there are some specific uh, additional problems that these patients also may have. One is called as a locking. Okay. Now, what is locking is there are special structures within the, the knee joint. So dear viewers, now we'll be going for a break. We'll be back soon. Please do not forget to like and share our Facebook page. Also like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel. Welcome back dear viewers. You're watching BMC Global Live Al Hilal Health World. We have Dr. Prakash here with us. So now we'll be talking about knee injuries. So doctor, what are the common symptoms that they come in with for knee injuries? As I've uh, discussed earlier, uh, even these patients come with the, the common symptoms of uh, ligament injury. Yes. Basically, it will be pain, mm -hmm. swelling, yes. and uh, if they try to move the knee joint, it will be very painful yes. and limping. These are very common symptoms, and it happens here also. Mm -hmm. But some specific symptoms are special for the knee. One is called as a locking, and another one is the instability. Okay. Now, uh, let me... Uh, give a brief anatomy uh, so that the viewers can understand. Now, this is the model of the knee. Now, if we look inside the knee, now what you're looking at is the femur bone and the tibia. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the supporting ligaments from the outside. Okay. And the one you can see in the front is called as the ACL or the anterior cruciate ligament. And there's a similar ligament on the back that's called as a PCL. Okay. And the ones which are like you can see two C shaped structures here, and these are called as the meniscus. Okay. Now, if these meniscus they basically act as a shock absorber, mm -hmm. and if they get torn, the consistency of this is somewhat like a rubber. Okay. Once it, it gets damaged, it can get stuck between the two bones and uh, for uh, and they start experiencing locking. Now what happens is these patients will not be able to make the knee straight. Okay. So they have to walk on a bent knee and it will be quite painful. Mm -hmm. This is a specific s symptom which suggests that there may be the injury of the meniscus. Mm -hmm. And as far as the, the ligaments are concerned, like I've already discussed, these mainly give the stability uh, for the knee, when the knee is moving, so that it doesn't allow to shake. Yeah. Now, if these ligaments get cut, then the patient will start experiencing something called as an instability. Yeah. What we mean by an instability is when they when they try to put the foot and walk, they feel that the knee is wobbly; it is shaking. Mm -hmm. This will make them lose a, lo a loss of confidence, especially in a normal walk. They may not have so much of difficulty. But when they are trying to walk down the stairs quickly or they want to take a leap or a jump or a stride or they want to run, mm -hmm. in all these scenarios, when they land on the injured leg, mm -hmm. they will not feel stable, they will not feel safe. Mm -hmm. They will feel that they may fall. Mm -hmm. This is an instability symptom. If that is there, then most likely that patient yes. is experiencing with one of the ligament tears. So doctor, yes, we understood that these are the common symptoms. And so how is it diagnosed and how is it treated, these knee injuries? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the common protocols which I have described for the ankle injuries, mm -hmm. uh, most of them hold good here also. Okay. It starts with the doctor, he's going to go to the history, 
try to understand the mechanism. He's going to do some special tests on the knee joint to get some clue of what part of the knee is injured. And then it will again next go to the basic investigation tools of an x-ray to see if any bony injury is there. Once this is done, the, there are two options at the end of the first visit of a knee injury to the doctor. Now, if, the, if it's a very obvious injury, then the doctor may straight away advise to go ahead with an MRI investigation. Uh, it's not mandatory, but if it is very obvious, he may advise that. But uh, in most of the cases, when the patient walks in for the first time, we generally give uh, some more time for this pain and symptoms to, to get reduced. So he's going to treat it with medications and may also call you back after two or three weeks time, again recheck. And at that time also, if he suspects that there's a ligament injury there inside, then he will advise you MRI at that juncture. So either way, the MRI is the, the main diagnostic tool to confirm that there's a ligament or a meniscal injury within the knee joint. This is how your doctor is going to uh, uh, diagnose the, uh, the knee sports injuries. Coming to the treatment part, uh, compared to the ankle injuries which I told you, even though ankle injuries are common, majority of them are managed without any surgery, uh, but that is not the situation in the knee injuries. So here, at least 50 percent of them will need a surgical intervention. They are not as common as ankle, but when they happen, at least in 50 percent of the cases, they may end up needing a surgical intervention. So the basic thing is once the doctor has diagnosed, uh, if he thinks the injuries are not critical, then he is going to again advise you for the rest, ice packs, limb elevation, medicines for the pain, and in some cases even plaster as well. But if the, the very critical structures which I have explained like an ACL stone or a PCL stone or a meniscus stone or uh, cruciate ligaments are torn in a very high grade, uh, this, in these circumstances there is uh, no option uh, to treat them uh, but with surgery. Surgery becomes necessary especially in a younger patients. Uh, these are all what I am explaining are in the general sense. But a uh, lot of other things also go into consideration when the doctor is going to advise uh, because they are going to consider the age, they are going to consider is the patient is having other medical conditions, they are going to uh, again uh, uh, consider the level of activity, mm -hmm. they are going to consider uh, what the patient wants. Uh, depending on all these things, then the doctor is going to advise the treatment. Remember because the, even with an ACL injury, the patient can still walk, that is not a problem. The problem comes only when he wants to run or jump or he wants to go back to the sports. So in these situations, it becomes necessary that surgery is the only way. Now there are different surgeries which have been described uh, for, the, for the knee injuries mm -hmm. and most of these can be performed by keyhole surgery. Okay. So doctor, what is keyhole surgery? Uh, a keyhole surgery, the medical name for this is, is arthroscopy. Okay. The basic principle is, is there is a specially designed camera mm -hmm. uh, in a small tube, okay. which may be 4 to 6 millimeters, which is with a small cuts, it is put into the, into the knee joint. It has a camera attached and also has a light source, mm -hmm. so that we can see inside when it is connected to the monitor. Okay. So this is a keyhole surgery in a, in, a, in a broad sense. Now what are the advantages? Why do we have to do a keyhole surgery, not a regular one? Yeah. Now two decades, two to three decades back when it was not in a common practice, mm -hmm. the sports injuries were dealt with by open procedure. Yeah. By okay. open procedure what used to happen was they would open up the knee from top to bottom and then repair it. Mm -hmm. Now by doing so, the cut is very big. Yeah. And the pain which comes for the patient also will be big. Oh, okay. And uh, the chances of infection are more. Chances of blood loss, how much blood loss? Definitely blood loss will be much higher in open procedure. Plus rehabilitation, 
how quickly they can go back to their regular life that is also is prolonged. Now with the advent of keyhole surgery it has made a remarkable improvement in these things because uh, even though the procedure which we do inside is complex from outside it is only uh, uh, an inch of, of stab incisions or small incisions two of them from the outside only they are there. By doing that the pain is much less, the swelling is much less, the stiffness in the knee joint is much less, infection chances are much lesser, blood loss is very minimal almost to the extent of nil and then the rehab is also much quicker so that it becomes easy for them to go back to their daily life. In fact in many of the centers abroad uh, where they have the, uh, where they have the um, issues of the insurance most of this are done as a daycare surgery. A daycare means they come in the morning, do the surgery and be back in home by the same night. Yes. That is the advantage of a keyhole surgery. So most of the knee surgeries, ligament injuries, meniscal injuries, osteochondral fractures, all of them can be treated, more than 90 percent of them can be treated by the keyhole surgeries. Only select few of them still need open surgeries. Okay, so Dr. when a person sustains these injuries, the sports injuries, what are the do's and don'ts of these well, the first thing is they have to stay calm because when they injured, the first thing uh, comes to is is really very bad happened. That will be the first thing. So fear will aggravate the pain. Fear will always aggravate the pain because the pain and the fear are represented in the cortex. So first stay calm. Next, elevate the leg. If, you, if, if, it's going to, if it's going to take some time for you to meet the doctor, find a place or in your home or in an office, wherever it happens or in the field, try to elevate it, keep it at a higher level so that the swelling does not come and then you can put ice immediately over that part. Okay. Uh, do not massage, the massage will only increase the pain. Okay. Yeah? If you have a sprays or a gel, just apply it mm -hmm. uh, but do not massage it. These are the common ones. If you suspect that there is a fracture, then in that case we have to find a hard, uh, sub hard object to splint it as well. These are the common things that the, uh, that the people can do if unfortunately they sustained uh, a sports injury. Okay. So, Doctor, how can these sports injuries be prevented? Well, that is a good question because now uh, the major advances in the sports injury as well as in the sp sports uh, physio rehab, yes. this is the uh, upcoming thing where all the effort is being made to prevent the injuries. Okay. Uh, because for a professional athlete, especially for the professional athletes, when they injure, getting back to the game uh, becomes a quite prolonged uh, yes. process. For example, when you undergo an ACL surgery, uh, most of them will require at least six months to go back to the game. Okay. So especially if it is an important player of a, of a, of a, of a big league, then uh, it becomes really difficult. So all the efforts now uh, or the research is, is going to prevent these injuries. Now basically this injury prevention uh, is being done by the physiotherapist. Mm -hmm. Now I encourage uh, the, the newer physiotherapist to go on and, and uh, approach these programs and get trained so that they can guide uh, the professional athletes or even the sports uh, enthusiasts mm -hmm. or even uh, people who come to the gym uh, so that uh, this field is basically what, what it does is they will train them to prevent the injuries by training the different muscles, uh, how to warm up, how to do the stretches, uh, all these common things and how to train different muscles of different joints. By doing this, uh, there is a remarkable drop in the chances of injury happening in the first place so that we can uh, eventually avoid all the things which happen after that.